In case you missed the second episode, we left the Breda River and travelled up the Trudeau Pass into the Karoo where we made a couple of stop-offs, including a South African Bloody Mary for Beau, held a picnic with ostrich capaccio, made a Thai risotto at an abandoned farmhouse that we found, and then last but not least, we celebrated Gordon's birthday at the Coloured Stork Spa. Goody, goody. I have to ask myself, when did life and food become about instant satisfaction? About self-service TV dinners, the 15-minute microwave roast chicken, chocolate mousse in a box, money for love and love for money, instead of the sublime importance of friendships, of weekends away, sunshine, and the great outdoors. So now all things aside, welcome to Cooked, to my life. Wildside backpackers, and I anticipated being a little bit wild. Come along. For that. Good morning. Uh, you want to lift, or are you enjoying the walk? Enjoying the walk. Yeah. 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 So, which is a bit worrying. Enjoy the walk. Thank you. Cool. See you, Dusta. No. <laughs> They're trying to give us a push. <laughs> right, so we're in Africa, the southern part, and for this episode we're travelling down from the Coloured Storp Spa in the interior down to Buffalo Bay on the coast. Not too far, probably about 300 k's. Now the beauty about staying at a backpack is, is you get to meet a whole whack of new friends who travel our world with their world on their shoulders. And besides, we need a change of pace, and they don't call it wild side for nothing. or anything for what's about to happen. But what you can't possibly understand if you don't do a road trip like this is how fantastic it is to be going to a new place every couple of days, nor how hard it is to be on the open road day in and day out and still shoot a cooking show. And after 10 days on the open road, we all need to blow off a little steam. Okay, right. Crew, 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 I'd just like to convene the crew meeting. Well, a lot of steam. But it doesn't matter, we're all adults, relatively responsible considering that we've become a travelling circus where the journey has become more important than the destination. And this is a journey, a life-changing, mind-altering journey. And lest we forget, it's an epic 4,500 kilometre, 13 destination road trip by a group of friends. Amazing how we got here. It just all happened.
and failed. Raucous night, hangover breakfast. Right, we're going to start off with a really simple health uh, bread muffin. So what we've got here is some nutty wheat flour. There's about four cups in here. Everything pretty much gets dumped in a bowl. This is just bran over here. We've got about three cups. We've got pecan nuts over here. Just like crush them up a bit. Sunflower seeds. Some beautiful pistachio nuts. Poppy seeds. Okay, these I'm going to chop up a bit. We've got some Turkish apricots, oh, and that also just gets dumped in there. And just a bit of honey, it sort of binds all the nuts and seeds. And then we've got some Bulgarian yogurt over here. About six cups. Pumpkin and sesame. A little bit of salt. Two tablespoons of baking powder. Yeah, so that all goes in there, and then we just stir it around, really. <laughs> Goes really quickly. And then just like a spoonful in each. Okay, these are ready to go in the oven now. I'm gonna stick them in. Jess, how does it feel to just lie there? Thank you, boy. I'm gonna make us a little fresh berry smoothie. David, come here, my brother. You're looking shocking this morning. You can also come get a little bit of healthiness in. <sighs> now the only thing that's really going to sort out the hangover is like a whole whack of fresh stuff and but my legs are shaking. <laughs> I had got some lychee yogurt and some berry yogurt and some mixed berries and some gooseberries and strawberries and raspberries. I'm going to make myself one and you're just going to make yourself one. So you're just going to grab whatever you want in your... whatever you want into your thing, into your smoothie. Maybe a little more kiwi. And then I'm just going to toss it in. And then I'm just going to add some juice. Oh. I'm not so strong today, Del. I should have, like, tried to do this later or something. You can put the lid on, and you're going to whiz it. Then it's supposed to come rushing out. <sighs> and that's a quick way to sort out all your dietary requirements when you're a bit hungover. The only unfortunate part is that it takes a little while to take effect, so I'm going to go and lie down again. And you're going to make yourself one, David, and you're going to show someone else as well, so call someone in. So much 
your face lights up And all I feel is butterflies Sometimes you feel so much I feel it too Good man. Thank you very much. Yeah. See ya. I'm a sweet crazy boy. I mean, yeah. Quinn, what are you doing? No, I couldn't leave. I, I need to get cooked tonight. And the last one is a couple of. <laughs> You've got the oh man, these are the oysters. That's all my other stuff and other people's stuff on the ground. All of this is going to turn into the Thai paella later. It's a nice meal because I'm going to. Everything's prepped, so we're going to sit outside in the sunshine with everyone, have a couple of drinks, and slowly make late lunch, early dinner. Now, Franz is going to quickly do the clams up for me. Okay, do it, okay. baby. You're just going to heat this pan up? <laughs> okay, get your um, pan on a hot fire, and then you add your clams. And then after that, just a bit of sake wine, which is rice wine vinegar. And then we're just going to steam them. So put a lid on and wait for them to open up. <laughs> now, you have to chew your oyster. You knew it was coming to oh. you, Jenny. You feed mm. us, I feed you. Mm. Oh, yeah, no. Fran forgot about these. If there's too much steam for you. See, you see they've opened up now. And we're going to use these much later on for a little bit of flavor. OK, Dale, we're just going to start off with the prawns. And we're doing it now because they look beautiful at this time of the day. Fran, come help with this loads. I actually didn't realize how many were. We're just going to seal them and we're going to add them in right at the end of the paella. Now they've been marinated in ginger, chili, chili garlic. garlic, sesame oil, and oil. But you can see it's starting to happen, and that's what you kind of know about prawns is how they start changing from this translucent color to the beautiful red. It's starting to happen on the edges now. Oh. All we wanted to do was just seal it more than anything else. And this fire's not really hot enough. I really wanted this like flash burn fire. So we might need to turn one or two of them again. The difference between a prawn that's done and not done is the way how this one is translucent and this one's changed colour already. Now, I'm just par doing them. I'm not doing them completely because the balance of it will get done when I throw them into the paella dishes and pans just now. Thank you very much. Thank Cheers, it's good to snog the bomb and all the
Now we only have one pile of dish, so the rest of them are going to be pans. And it's all a very quick process from here on onwards. Olive oil. That one. Good. Hello. How are you, Joe? OK. Then we're going to go garlic. OK, red capsicums. Uh, a little uh, lemongrass. Short grain basmati rice. It's already been um, rinsed, so it loses a little bit of its gluten. And all we're going to do is cook it until it goes translucent. And again, if this gets a little bit burnt, I'm not too perturbed. I'm going to need someone to come in here and help me now. John, OK, I need you to get a wooden spoon from inside, brother. <laughs> this one's burning. All we're trying to do now is get the grains of rice to go translucent, which means they've sucked up the olive oil. So, John, don't worry, you don't have to do it so hard. Can I box it up? OK, yeah. A little bit into all of them. Light's not so good here, but when you look what's happening over there, which is better? Okay, Del, it's not. The grains of rice are starting to go translucent. Now we're going to start adding a little bit of um, pitch stock that I made at the Breda River. Well, actually, Graham made it at the Breda River, but regardless. And again, this is pretty much like similar sort of process to the risotto. You can smell. Tell me what it smells like, because you know they tell you that it's fish stock, but what does it smell like? It's not, it's not what I was waiting for, but now Dale, a little bit of stock that's left in there. What we're gonna do is add saffron into it. And they give you this huge bloody bottle, that, with this in it. With this in it. OK, now check out the colour of the stock now. I'm trying to get into life for you. See the colour of the stock? It's like a greeny, pea soup kind of colour. Now that we've added the saffron, and we're going to heat it up, pile is going in now. A couple in each, and it's just for flavour. It's a bit of a bitch cooking in so many different pots. So I'll give it my best shot. And even that little bit of ugly juice at the bottom is going to be beautiful, so... So now, Dale, because this is a, a Thai paella, part of the stock is the fish stock that we made ourselves. The other part of it is coconut milk. John, you're doing a sterling job, my brother. Some peppers. Not too much stirring, John, now. Now it's more just getting the sauces in. OK, Dale. Now, it's starting to change colour. To start. Oh, I've got no light to show you, but it's starting to go a little bit muted, more orangey inside there now. So now it's going to start going in. That's the only real... See the colour now? There's your traditional saffron colour. Mushrooms. Now, all I'm doing is adding a bit of sesame oil. Fish into the fire. And all you're going to do is seal it. Now, guys, all I'm really doing is flavouring it in the sesame oil. It's going to poach itself 
in the paella in a couple of seconds, so I'm not too worried. And I also want it to be tender. Salt. A couple of oyster mushrooms. I'm just crunching them in for their sharp bite. Prawns. Sprouts. Chinese cabbage. Beans. Cashew nuts. I need the red Thai curry paste from Fran. I feel like I'm running a marathon. Uh, all I've done is add a little red Thai curry paste. I don't measure anything. Whew, I'm exhausted. All we're going to do now is close them up, put them into the side of the fire. Like another 10 minutes or so, and let all those flavors now bake in together. Can you hear it? Can I go, mmm? Mm. Mm. This is to ensure that we get maximum, maximum good camera shots. Because who's interested in those lazy ass ones? Grubs up. Thanks, guys. So, um, you've got to all help yourselves, because I don't do that. And then grab an oyster as well, put it on the side of your plate. Drizzle the oyster juice over your paella and eat. Take a look at Jason. He's standing out here in the mud, so we can hold us all together. What is he? <laughs> so this is the end of our third episode. We're on our way that way, up to Titicama to spend a day camping, or two camping down the coast. We've had a really good time here. We've met some really nice people. Some really nice people. Some nice honey too. And uh, hopefully we're going to invite a couple along with them, a couple of them along with us to. Uh, Enjoy the ride with us. So we'll see you shortly. I hate that ending. That ending was fucking <laughs> horrible, <laughs> isn't it? Oh, no! And I know you're going to use it, which is even worse. <laughs> um.